Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Storytime with Mr. Brennan. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. Today's book is The Magic School Bus Plants Seeds, which I think is actually probably a great story considering it's getting to be a lot nicer weather out and it's springtime. Every class probably learns about plants and seeds, but not every class has Miss Frizzle for a teacher. When Miss Frizzle does something, she goes all the way. She started by letting us plant a whole garden behind our school. A photographer was coming to take a picture of our garden, so we all wanted it to look its best. To think that these beautiful tomato plants started from tiny seeds, Carlos said. Add some soil, sunshine, water, and some tender loving care, and you've got this great garden. And once that photographer takes our picture, we'll be famous, Carlos said. We could be on the cover of Plant It magazine. Would you like me to autograph your seed packet, Dorothy Ann? I'll think about it, said Dorothy Ann. Phoebe was not as excited as Carlos. I wish I had the beautiful plant I raised at my old school. Tim put the finishing touch on a drawing. Phoebe smiled. That's it. Thank you, Tim, she said. Still, I wish I had the real thing for our picture this afternoon. Miss Frizzle spotted the drawing. Your plant looks lovely, Phoebe, she said. Not to worry. It's a simple matter to stop by your old school on a little field trip. We all piled into the old school bus. Carlos was worried that we might not get back in time for the photographer. This could take all day. Couldn't we fly or something, Miss Frizzle? Excellent idea, Carlos, she said. Suddenly, the whole bus began to spin. It rose in the air as if it had wings. It did have wings. We were riding in a ladybug. As we flew over buildings and trees, Phoebe began to look nervous. What if Mr. Seedplot sees us, she asked. We never turned into ladybugs when he was my teacher. Just then, we all saw a school below. Phoebe star stared, sorry, stared. There it is, she gasped. The bus swooped in low through the school's garden. It looked like a jungle. Here's the perfect landing pad. I mean, pedal, said Miss Frizzle. The bus landed with a bounce and crawled along the pedal of a huge flower. We crawled one step too far. Suddenly, our ladybug slid into something wet and slippery. We're stuck in some goop, Ralphie yelled. It's called nectar, Dorothy Ann said. Follow me, class, said the frizz. She opened the doors and slipped out into the lake of nectar. We didn't know it then, but Mr. Seedplot could have reached out and picked us. Phoebe's plants certainly have grown well, he said to himself. She worked hard on them. I really should take one to her new school for her. Mr. Seedplot heard a buzz and looked up. Ah, bees! I won't disturb their work right now, he said, turning to a patch of tomato plants. We also saw the bees coming, and they were headed right into our flower. Yikes! Air raid, shouted Arnold. Glory be, said the frizz happily. As soon as these bees drink enough nectar, then we can crawl out of here. All aboard the lady bus, please. Next stop, Anther. Dorothy Ann is amazing. Even upside down, she could remember what she had read that morning. The anther is the part of the flower that makes pollen, she said. There we were, on top of the anther, with bees buzzing all around us. It was then that Phoebe caught sight of her old teacher. Hey, it's Mr. Seedplot, she yelled. He'll see us. Do something fast. Miss Frizzle stayed calm. No problem, she said cheerfully. 
we'll get out of here the same way the pollen does. Miss Frizzle pressed a yellow button and we shrank again. Now we were as small as a grain of pollen. Phew, said Phoebe. That was close. Carlos was not so happy. We'll never get back to school in time for the photographer, he grumbled. Be of good cheer. We are on our way, said Miss Frizzle. Hang on, she called as the leg of the passing bee swept us up and away. Off we flew, stuck to the leg of that bee. It was a short ride. At the very next plant, the bee bumped a flower and brushed us off, along with a lot of pollen. Here we are, Miss Frizzle announced. Where? Phoebe asked. Tim showed her his picture. I think we're on this center part, the stigma, Tim said. The bee had dropped a lot of pollen here. With a big sneeze, Arnold bumped into a grain of pollen, knocked it over, and fell down some kind of tunnel underneath. Phoebe looked down the tube. Mr. Seedplot will never spot us down here, she said, and she hopped into the tube and slid down. Miss Frizzle beamed, that's the spirit. Take chances. Make mistakes. Check out pollen tubes. Yahoo! She yelled as she, too, jumped down the tube. We all slid to the bottom of the pollen tube. Now where are we? asked Carlos. Couldn't we just grab one of Phoebe's plants and go back to school? I don't think we need a whole plant, Keisha said. Look at this. She pointed to something that looked like a big rock. It's a seed. I get it, Dorothy Ann said. When pollen from one flower lands on the stigma of another, it grows a pollen tube, finds one of these egg cells, and together they make a seed. Carlos still wasn't happy. No seed can grow into a plant by three o'clock, he said. Not without some help, said Miss Frizzle. She reached into the bus and pressed a button, and suddenly things went wild. The seeds were growing bigger and sprouting hair. We need to hurry things along a bit, said Miss Frizzle. Everyone on the bus, please. We all rushed back to the bus. The doors slammed shut, and we drove up and on to one of the biggest seeds. As the seeds around us grew bigger, the flower burst open. We felt the sun shine in, and a breeze blowing through the windows of the bus. Suddenly, our seed flew into the air with us on board. Anyway, we flew on the back of our seed, carried along with gusts of wind. Carlos still worried. Can't we go any faster, he asked. Well, Miss Frizzle said, this is pretty fast for a seed but there are seeds that travel by attaching themselves to dogs or birds. Or people, she said, eyeing a man on a bicycle. No, croaked Phoebe, that's Mr. Seedplot. But she was too late. Our seed had landed on Mr. Seedplot's, Seedplot's hair. Oh, how embarrassing, Phoebe groaned. We were almost home still stuck in Mr. Seedplot's hair, and we hadn't even been introduced. So we all showed, Hello, Mr. Seedplot! Except for Phoebe, who was too embarrassed to talk to. But when Mr. Seedplot swung his head to see who was calling him, we flew off. Last stop, Miss Frizzle announced. She pushed a button. Poof! The bus got big again. She pushed another button. Poof! The seed which had landed in our garden, grew into a tall plant with beautiful flowers. Ah, there you are, Mr. Seedplot said when he spotted us. I brought one of Phoebe's plants, but I see that she already has one. Nice to see you again, Miss Frizzle. Phoebe gasped. You mean you've met Miss Frizzle before, she said. Mr. Seedplot smiled. Yes, she's a very special person. And it looks like over here they're on the cover of Planet Magazine. And inside is a letter to the editor of Planet Magazine. Dear Editor, 
I liked the pictures of the garden planted by Miss Frizzle's class, but there are a few things I'd like to point out to you about your article. First of all, I have never heard of a school bus that could turn into a ladybug or a grain of pollen. Second, I don't see how anyone could be allergic to such a big grain of pollen. It could never get inside his nose. Also, I would like to know how anyone could make a seed or plant grow in just a few seconds. Even with my secret homemade fertilizer recipe, my plants take a long time to grow and to make seeds, like days, weeks, or even months. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a plant quite like Phoebe's. Did you invent that plant? And you must have done some kind of trick photography on Miss Frizzle's clothes, because no one dresses like that. Your faithful reader, D. Tractor. And the response is, Dear reader, you are absolutely right. Could you send us your fertilizer recipe? The editor. The end. I hope everyone liked the story. Feel free to comment below or on Google Classroom. I'm going to continue to do these each week. And when I do, I'll let you know through Google Classroom when it's been posted. And remember, if you're feeling down, needing someone to talk to, make sure that you talk to someone, talk to a friend, talk to a family member, talk to a, a teacher, myself, or you can also call Kids Help Phone at 1-800-668-6868. Again, that's Kids Help Phone at 1-800-668-6868. Take care, everyone. Stay home and stay safe. All the best.